Today we're going to talk about the various belief systems of China. As always, you should have your notebook open to the correct page. At the top, you should have the title of the notes. You should also draw a line about two and a half inches from the left-hand side straight down. This will divide your notebook paper into two sections. Area A will be where the area you put the keywords in. Area C is where you'll take most of your notes, draw your little diagrams, bullet notes. And finally, area B is where you'll do your reflections, summaries, or questions that you have for me. China is a unique country when it comes to religion. In America, you ask someone what their faith is and they'll say, well, I'm Christian or I'm a Jew or I'm a Muslim. In China, they're Confucianist, Buddhist, could be Taoist, could be ancestor worship. It, they mix it together. They can be a little bit of everything. You don't expect a, an American to say, well, I'm a little bit Christian. I'm a little bit Islamic. Um, but that's what you'd expect to find in China. We're going to be talking about five different popular philosophies found in China. We're going to start with ancestor worship, move on to Confucianism, then Taoism, Buddhism, and finally we'll talk about legalism. We're going to start with animism, a popular form of religion found all around the world. The two pictures show a popular ritual practiced by followers of ancestor worship. They're presenting food to the dead ancestors. There's a belief that the dead ancestors have a communication between the world we live in and the spiritual world. There are three main beliefs in ancestor worship. One is that a person good or bad fortune is directly influenced by the souls of his or her ancestors. Uh, number two, that all departed ancestors have the same material needs that they had when they were alive, such as food or clothing or their favorite toy. And finally, number three, that even though the ancestors are dead, they can still help those that are living. Now we're going to move into Confucianism. Here we have a quote from Confucius. To learn without thinking is fruitless. To think without learning is dangerous. Obviously, the quote focuses in on education. It's the Confucius idea that man can be cultivated or transformed through education and therefore transform society for the better. Therefore, thinking is required of learning, and learning is required for action. Confucianism is not about getting to heaven. It's about controlling life here on earth. With this philosophy, one could run the government, and run, one can run his family. And it's with Confucianism's value for education, family, hard work, these universal morals that help Chinese society stay together. Confucius taught that there were five basic relationships in society, that one would be dominant, the other would be obedient, that if one followed his place in society, then everything would work out. For example, you'd have the governed to the governed, the emperor to the peasant. It was the responsibility of the emperor to protect and provide for the peasants. And therefore, it was their responsibility to follow the directions of the emperor. In these five basic relationships is what held Chinese society together. As a side note, Merchants were considered outside of these relationships. They were considered not respectful, for they worked or lived off the work of others without providing anything back to society. The last thing I want to talk about Confucianism is the idea of the mandate of heaven. This is the idea that the gods have given their faith to the emperor, that everything is going great because the gods love the emperor, but... If there were famine or drought or war, 
then obviously the emperor no longer has the blessings from heaven to rule over the people. And this gives the people the right to revolt against the emperor and start a whole new dynasty. For the Chinese, this is a natural cycle. Now let's talk about Taoism. It's pronounced with the sound of a D, even though it's spelled with a T. And if you look for it on the internet, you'll probably see it spelled both ways, T-A-O or D-A-O. Here's a quote from Lao Tzu, the founder of Taoism. The highest good is like water, because water excels in benefiting the myriad of creatures without contending with them, and settles where none would like to be. It comes closest to the way. Taoism is a religion that's all about finding the answers through observing nature. In this quote, Lao Tzu says to be like water to try not to get into people's way, to try not to get into people's business, to try not to cause problems, to move around the situations. This, he says, is the closest to being, finding the way, the way to heaven or spiritual enlightenment. Often when I think of Taoism, I think of the animated Disney film Mulan, the scene where she's crying in the garden, and their father makes her feel better by talking about the cherry blossom. As he says, look how it is, how all of them have bloomed, but yet one has not, but it will eventually bloom and be the prettiest of all. He is therefore looking at nature for solutions to a family crisis. This would be the Taoist way. The word Tao means the way. In Japanese, you'll hear it in Korean, you'll even hear it pronounced as Do. And you'll often hear it in martial arts like Aikido or Judo. These martial arts are supposed to show you the way to enlightenment. For purist Taoists, uh, they would focus on prayer through meditation, try to distance themselves from wants and desires. This seems strictly un-American, as we're taught from birth all the way until we die that the person with the most toys wins. Daos would also say that if you observe nature, you will find solution to many problems. And in fact, early Daos are going to discover things like narcotics in the natural studies. This is going to lead to eventual what we call alchemy or early forms of chemistry. Finally, Daos believed that the universe is full of chaos, and you really just need to upset, I mean, accept the disorder in the world. Now let's talk about Buddhism. Here's a quote from the Buddha. The mind is flighty and hard to grasp. The mind pursues all it desires. To tame the mind is great goodness. Subdue the mind and no tranquility. In the quote, the Buddha is stressing the ideas of trying to free one's mind from evil and try to be in control of feelings and thought. And it's through this and meditation that one can find spiritual enlightenment. Buddhism is not a native religion to China. In fact, it came across the trade routes from India. When it came to China, many Chinese people found it very similar to Taoism. For Buddhism, too, focused on the idea that there was chaos or suffering in the world and that people shouldn't be so attached to material possessions. Buddhism also taught that if you wish to escape suffering, you'd have to follow a guideline called the Eightfold Path. The following are the Eightfold Path, these rules that many Buddhists try to live their life by, again, focusing on the word try to live by. Of all the rules, I keep coming back to six and seven. Free your mind from evil and be in control of feelings and thought. This seems to encompass a lot of the other rules of the Eightfold Path. Now let's finish up with legalism.
The following quote sounds like it could have come right out of your school notebook. Rewards should be rich and certain so that people will be attracted by them. Punishments should be severe and definite so that people will fear them. And laws should be uniform and steadfast so that people will be familiar with them. This is a philosophy of strict common sense. In fact, the two Chinese characters off to the side are Fa and Jia, which means the school of law. A few times in China's history, this system of law ran the state, not the ruler. The rulers and the ministers were simply part of the state-run machine. Therefore, in this system, no one was above the law, that even the emperor had to follow the rules. But in reality, the emperor probably got away with whatever he wanted to do. In the two pictures we see here, these are classic World War II pictures of Nazi Germany as they were practicing book burning. The Nazis, as well as the ancient Chinese, believed that at one time education was bad. It caused people to think twice about what they were being told to do. Therefore, this was a system of trying to control the peasant and trying to control the mind of the people. If you control their mind, there will be less rebellion. Here we are at the bottom of our notes. This is the summary section. This is where you need to go back and read through your notes and create some sort of connection. So the response is going to ask you to either summarize or draw some graphics or even come up with some questions that might show up on a test or questions you might want to ask me. You want to do this at the bottom of every note page.